Chapter 25 The Punishment of the Red Goblins It's certainly time we dealt with those red goblins, said Mr. Whiskers, the chief brownies wiping his long beard with a yellow handkerchief. He had dropped plum juice all down, all down it, and just at that moment there came a great surprise. A deep voice behind them said, Oh, here's a nice little company. What about coming back with me into Wizardland and doing a few jobs? Everyone turned in dismay. They saw a curious figure above them leaning down from a big branch. It was a wizard whose green eyes blinked lazily like a cat. It's mighty one, the wizard, said Moonface, and he's got up, as, and he got up to bow. For mighty one was a mighty as his name. Everyone did the same. Who is he? whispered Fanny. He's the most powerful wizard in the whole world, whispered back Silky. He's come down the ladder, so that means that the land of red goblins has gone, and the land of wizards has come. They are always on the lookout for servants, and I suppose Mighty One has come down to look for some. Well, I'm not going to be his servant to the wizard, said Fanny. You won't be, said Silky. He's not a bad fellow. He won't take any one who doesn't want to go. It's good training for fairies who wants to learn magic. Mighty One blinked his eyes slowly and looked at the little crowd on the branches before him. I need about a hundred servants to take back with me, he said. Who will come? Nobody said a word, and Moonface got up and bowed again. Your Highness, he said, we none of us want to leave the enchanted wood. We are very happy here. You may perhaps find others who would like to go back with you. We beg you not to take any of us. Well, said the wizard, sliding his green eyes from one person to the other. I haven't much time. My land will swing away from the faraway tree in about an hour and a half. Can you get me some servants that I want? If you can, I will not take you. Everybody looked worried, but Joe jumped up with a beaming face. Your Highness, would red goblins do for your servants? Excellently, said the Mighty One. They are quick and they are obedient, but goblins would never agree to coming with me. They belong to their own land. Moonface, what's his name, and the saucepan man all began to talk at once. Mighty One lifted up his hand, and they stopped. One at a time, said the wizard. So, Moonface spoke. Sir, he said, we have about a hundred goblins boxed up in the middle of the tree. They try to take us prisoner. It would be very good punishment for them if we gave them to you, and you could take them away to your land as servants. Mighty One looked astonished. A hundred goblins, he said. That's very strange. Explain. So, Moonface explained. Mighty One was most interested to hear of their fight. We'll all go down to the bottom of the tree and let the goblins out one by one, said Joe, excited. Come on, what a shock for them when they see the wizard. So, they all trooped down the tree in the bright rays of the raising, rising sun. Really, it was all most exciting. They came to the trap door at the foot of the tree. Behind it they could hear a lot of shouting and squirreling and pushing. Don't push, you're squashing me. Moonface unbolted the trap door and opened it. Out shot a red goblin and fell on the green cushion of moss. He picked himself up, blinked in the bright sunlight, and then turned to run, but Mighty One tapped him with his wand, and he stood still. He couldn't move. He looked scared when he saw the wizard. One by one the red goblins tumbled out of the trapdoor, 
and were trapped by the wizard. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty. They came shooting out of the trapdoor, surprised and frightened, sliding gradually down the slippery slip as one after another slid from the trapdoor. Fanny giggled. It was a funny sight to see. It was a very good punishment for those bad goblins, she said to Silky. They came down the ladder to trap you, and now someone else has trapped them and is taking them back to his land. The red goblin stood in a sulky row, quite unable to run away. Quick march, said the wizard. Then, when the last one had slipped, out of the trap door and up the tree went the sulky goblins. It was no use trying to escape. The wizard had put a spell on their legs and they had to go up the top of the tree, through the big white cloud and into wizard land. Jolly good riddance to bad rubbish, said Joe. My word, what an exciting night we've had. I did enjoy it. Isn't it cold, said the saucepan man, shivering. Cold, cried Bessie and Fanny, who were feeling hot in the morning sun. Why, it's as warm as it can be. It's because he hasn't got his kettles and saucepans hung around him as usual, said What's-His-Name. I expect they feel like a coat to him. Poor old saucepan man. I don't like the look of him without his saucepan said fanny he doesn't look right can't we collect them for him they're on the ground and all about the tree so they began to collect the saucepan man's belongings he was very pleased they hung the kettles on him and put his saucepans all around him with his special one for his hat some of them were dented and bent but he didn't mind a bit. There, said Fanny, pleased. You look like yourself now. You looked horrible without all your saucepans on, like a snail without a shell. I never had a shell, said Saucepan Man. Shell? I said, said Fanny. Smell? said the Saucepan Man, looking around. I can't smell anything at the moment. What sort of smell, nice or nasty? Shell, not smell, said Fanny, particularly. Oh, shell, what shell, said the saucepan man. But Fanny had forgotten what she had said, and she shook her head in laughter. Never mind, she shouted. We really must go, said Joe. Mother will be up and wondering whatever happened to us. Oh dear, I do feel sleepy. Come on, girls. They said goodbye to all the tree dwellers and set off through the enchanted wood. Silky went back to her house in the tree, wondering what had happened to her clock, which hadn't joined in the fight at all. It had been fast asleep. Moonface went back to the tree, yawning. What's his name and saucepan man climbed back, so tired that they fell fast asleep before they reached their hole and had to put had to be put safely in the corner of a broad branch by the angry pixie pixie in case they fell dame washalot went back making up her mind to do no washing that day so there was no there was peace in the tree and only the snores of what's his name could be heard far away up the tree in the land of the wizards, the red goblins were working hard. Ah, they had got a good punishment, hadn't they? They wouldn't be in such a hurry to catch other people in the future. The three children got home and their mother stared at them in surprise. You were all up early this morning, she said. I thought you were all still in bed and asleep. Fancy getting, getting up. Fancy getting up and going out for a walk before breakfast like that. How sleepy the children were that day. And dear me, didn't they go to bed early that night. 
No more wandering through the enchanted wood and up the faraway tree for me tonight, said Joe. As he got into bed, I vote we don't go there for a long time. It's getting just a bit too exciting. But it wasn't long before they went again, as you will see.